Hey, it's Nate from the Ask a Christian podcast. As if talking about religion wasn't a sensitive enough issue, let's talk about some politics. So this question I keep getting asked uh, years after President Trump has been in office, it's still recurring pretty often. And uh, since he's also declared that he's running in the 2024 presidential election, let's just go ahead and talk about it. The question is, how can Christians in good conscience support President Trump? Because Jesus wasn't on the ballot. All right, until next time. Uh, just kidding. Well, kidding about we're ending. We'll still talk. But um, we're not electing a Messiah. That's the answer. If we had a perfect Christian who was a perfect leader, our job would be done and very easy. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Throughout our whole presidential history, we have presidents who have been Christians, who have not been Christians, who have been espousing Christians, but people question that a lot. Um, and that doesn't automatically guarantee someone's going to be a good leader or not just because they're religious or non-religious views. Um, so as we see, let's look at look at Jimmy Carter. He, he seems like a decent Christian. Everything I've read about him, everything I know about him, Sunday school teacher, like seems like he walks the walk and, and has a sincere faith um, and is, is a decent Christian. Unfortunately, that did not automatically make him a good leader. Uh, people on both sides, his own party had trouble with him. Uh, Republicans and Democrats had issues with his leadership. He had the Iran crisis where there was hostages taken, like 50-something hostages taken, and people doubted uh, his, his effective leadership around that and had problems with the way he handled it. They had crazy in inflation and gas prices. A side note, not unlike we do right now in 2023. So being a Christian doesn't automatically mean someone is guaranteed to be a good leader any more than someone who has more political experience than I have time of being alive, that doesn't guarantee they're going to be an effective leader either. Just saying. So no one is immune from this. No matter what someone's political or religious leanings or experience does not automatically translate to effective leadership of a nation. So uh, let's go back. With President Trump, we have a, an imperfect human, just like you, just like me. No one is perfect. Some imperfections are more publicly on display that's embarrassing. Um, anyways, still, people are flawed individuals. We just have to choose the best person we think can govern a nation. So we separate word from deed, political versus personal, and we uh, separate deed, personal, from political. What they can do in their personal life versus what they do as a nation and as a leader. So we did have, Let's before we get to Hillary and, and Trump, let's talk about the primaries. So in the primaries, there were other espousing Christians who seem to be a more Christian example than Trump on, on the surface. Only God knows the heart. But as far as the surface goes, it seems like there were people that didn't have a lot of moral scandals around them. They were, they were kind of mild-mannered. They seemed, they seemed to talk about their faith in a sincere way. Um, however, those people, um, a lot of them, like uh, Cruz and some other people who are espousing Christians, they've held political office for a very long time, and the platforms they've ran on uh, either they haven't been able to get done or they haven't shown enough effective leadership that people were convinced they could correctly govern a nation. Um, and they, they, we question their sincerity. So even if we thought they were a fine Christian, that doesn't mean we thought there will be a fine leader, as indicated, because they didn't win. They didn't win the primaries. So myself included, that was it. A lot of these people have been a lot uh, around political office and Washington for a long time, and they just didn't get as much done as we would have liked to see, or their pet projects and the things they were running on. Um, we, we as Christians had things we were more interested in. So even though they were Christians, they may be focusing on something over here, and Christians are like, well, let's, let's focus on these things too. Like over here is great, we like that, but we also want this. So it was a policy issue and a platform issue versus even if we liked the platform, could they get it done? Did they have the gumption? Did they have the leadership to get it done? Versus Trump, who clearly was not a perfect person, but they were an outsider, um, so a lot of people took a chance. And the evidence we had was Trump seemed to say what he wanted to say and didn't care what anyone thought about it. So that right there gave him a step up as far as will he keep his promises, will he do what he says he's going to do, and that was that was evidence indicating yes, he would. It doesn't matter what kind of pressure people put on him uh, to his benefit and detriment, um, what, he, what he thinks he's going to say. So um, Christians believed, and not just Christians, we're not in a bubble, we're not aliens, uh, lots of people didn't trust the system, didn't trust political insiders who had held office forever, so we're all in the same boat. Uh, so people who were sick of the status quo and didn't think the current leadership could, could effectively govern a nation or couldn't push their platforms to a home run, we're all in the same boat. Another side note. Okay, so Christians really believe that Trump would do what he said, 
there is no reason to doubt him. Because if there was a reason to doubt him, people he would have tempered his tone during the primaries. He certainly would have. Anyway, he was rambunctious and rude and said terrible offensive things that are certainly not in line with Christianity. Um, but at the end of the day, how did that translate to leadership? So um, that's the answer. That what That's what pushed him over in the primaries. Um, then, in the 2016 presidential election, when it was Trump versus Hillary, um, if you never knew anything about Hillary Clinton, ever, and you only heard her give a couple speeches or interviews and only saw on paper, uh, she, would, she would look okay. Like, she, she usually, except for the deplorables thing, she usually says the right thing, she's articulate, she's on point, she has good delivery, good oratory skills, so on, on paper, and if you, if you don't know anything else about her, she, she seems okay, um, other than policy differences Christians would have, like, you know, pro-life versus her stance um, and, and things like that. So there's serious policy issues. Um, but as far as the way she handles herself, carries herself, seems fine. Articulate, well-spoken. However, unless you live under a rock, you're aware of everything she's done in her political career. So that right there makes a lot of people, again, not just Christians, but a lot of people, um, not trust her, not want to vote for her. So either they, they, would, they would doubt her sincerity in keeping her promises, and even if she did keep her promises, the platform she was running on is very much not in line with Christians. So we had that to vote for, or Trump, who wasn't uh, as articulate, wasn't nearly as well-spoken, was rough and tumble, got in Twitter wars, got in all kinds of stuff, said mean comments, did nasty things, the tapes came out with him and Billy Burr, you know, the, the grab him comments, all these things are terrible moral, thing, moral failings in Christianity. Um, which, by the way, illustrates everyone's imperfect and is in need of a savior. No one is perfect. Don't think you are. Some people hide their imperfections better than others. Uh, some are on display for the public to see. That's embarrassing. But no one's perfect. So let's not kid ourselves. So if we're faced with someone who sounds nice most of the time and has platforms completely opposing Christianity and other people with other issues, and you have someone else who is not a shining example of Jesus, um, but their platform is very friendly towards religion, and not just Christianity. Um, you know, Islam, Judaism, is just religious liberty and general freedom um, is a priority. And Christians, as, among, as well as other people of religions, and others just secular people who, who like freedom and less government, that was appealing to them. So based on, we had evidence he was going to follow through and push for these because he doesn't care what people seem to think. And we trusted him and took a chance. And for those people who did, we were... Happily, uh, happily pleased that he powered through and did almost all of what he said he was going to do. So that's how we supported him. And that's how, if Christians support him for 2024, I imagine it's going to be the same thing. It's, do you want someone who runs on a platform that's small government, which again is not just Christians, that's a whoever wants small government, is a smaller government, is pro-freedom and pro-religious liberty. So, for example, the Supreme Court justices, he got appointed, three. And then the other, like, what, hundred over 100-something federal judges? And a lot of these had conservative leanings, which led to Roe v. Wade being overturned. That was a great thing for Christians. Uh, Christians love that. And, by the way, Ruth Bader Ginsburg also said she supported the overturning of Roe v. Wade. So, we're living in a time where they just erected a demigoddess with horns and a justice for only thing like RBG war. Uh, apparently because they think she she um, was whatever. Um, it was like an anti Roe vs. Wade thing. She thought it should be overturned. Another side note, I'm getting away from myself. Anyway, so that's why. That's why we can support him, and that's why Christians who support him in 2024 can still support him. Uh, we shouldn't expect anything to change, so as long as he still runs on the similar platforms um, that he did, fiscal responsibility, pro-life, um, conservatism, small, limited government, religious liberty, religious freedom. These are things lots of people, secular included, can appreciate and do appreciate and are thankful for. Uh, versus someone who may say nice things um, and then do things or enact policies that are very, very out of line with Christianity. So, hope that helps. Um, happy 2024 election season. This is going to be a fun ride. <laughs>